Hello, I am Jacqueline Ortiz, aka the Self Love Diva, and I'm here to welcome you to the host of Self Love Diva, and it's all about skyrocketing your level of self confidence and self esteem and self love, so you can have that juicy, passionate, loving relationship you've always craved. And you want to learn more about me? You click selflovediva.com. But in the meantime, I am so freaking thrilled to introduce Macy. Hi, Macy. How are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm so glad to be here. Oh, I am so thrilled. I love your hair. I love it. Love it. I love Thank it. You. It's like gorgeous. I love it. Anyway, um, Macy Matarasso, aka the Reverend Lunch Lady. She is a love coach, a speaker, a spiritual teacher, helping the smart, single, spiritually conscious woman who want real lasting love, have the healing tools and strategies to get there without sacrificing who they are. After working with Macy, Women have the experience of living in a full confidence where they can speak and be who they are, appreciating the true beauty, quirks and all, make it inevitable that the perfect love shows up. Macy brings her clients a magical combination of relationship science, emotional healing, RIM facilitation, Kundalini yoga, and creative exploration to help women who want to feel more connection, self-love, joy, and purpose habit. She's been using these tools for over 25 years and found a powerful yet fun way for women to attract extraordinary love in their lives and macy's here to talk about dating as an empath and how you get rid of all that frustration and feeling drained so let's get down to it macy you ready yeah ready all right so why are we talking about this topic well um one of the things that i notice a lot in this modern dating world is that there can be really fast burnout and a lot of people don't even realize, you know, how much energy they're using and giving away and uh, sort of having it sort of taken from them in different relationships. And if you're not aware of that, um, even whether you're an empath or not, and we can talk about what that means, but Yes, please. Not aware of that, then it's it's going to take you out of the game. So, I mean, what I I relate to being an empath, which if you're wondering if you're an empath, certainly you can Google it. But here's some tips <laughs> um, that you know you find that when you go into big groups, that it can be super draining for you. I mean, almost like you get home and you just can't do anything else or you find that um, you just feel like if someone's crying, you feel like crying, like you can feel other people's emotions really strongly. Um, I know for me, when I used to be in corporate world, I found myself like feeling really drained a lot because I was around so many people all day long and it didn't quite make sense. But once I figured out that this is, this is just who I am. This is the kind of person I am. I'm a highly sensitive person, which some often is defined differently than empath, but it's in the same sort of pool. Um, that I had to take care of myself in a different way. And certainly when it came to dating, it's essential because my pattern was that I would throw myself out there and be enthusiastically trying to date and you know one or two dates one or two failed dates or whatever it was like a couple weeks and i would just feel so burned out i'd have to quit for months so it's like so in a week out for months is this what got you interested in being a love coach and helping women in this aspect um i would say that part of it is because part of my success in my love story, once I reached a certain point where I decided, you know what, either I'm just going to be happy being a cat lady or I'm going to figure this out. And when I decided, you know what, I do want to figure this out. I really want to share my life with someone like that was always been a dream in my heart that I decided to figure it out. And one of the aspects of figuring it out was definitely understanding how to manage my energy and in understanding that then I had a totally different way of navigating the dating world, which allowed me to, to actually date more. And then I met my beloved husband. 
Oh. And so really, you know, it's one piece of a lot of different pieces, I would say, but it's an important one. And the reason why it's so important is because it's the kind of thing that just the frustration and bitterness and exhaustion just takes you out of the game. And if you're out of the game, you're not meeting people and you can't have that desire of what you want. And that's totally something we can figure out and work with. Right. So yeah, absolutely. So if you're facing dating fatigue, how are you going to want to even enjoy the dates and even, even getting out of the gate? Why would you? If, you, if you're not having fun, you're not enjoying it, it becomes work. You'd rather just stay home at, at some point because it's just, you pick up too much energy. Yeah. Or it feels so bad. Like you're picking up energy that's feeling really like low vibe and you're just feeling depressed and you just don't even want to do it anymore. And you can also mistaken it for your own. So that's another aspect of being an empath is being able to learn what's yours and what's not yours. Awesome. So some of the ways we could determine if we are an empath or if we're just being sensitive, what are some extra ones? Other so ones? just like, I mean, really those are the biggies. You know, you notice that you feel drained when you're around people a lot. Um, you know, online dating, you know, may feel super draining and frustrating for you. Um, the other thing is that you feel a lot of emotions. If you notice that you cry a lot at movies, <laughs> I mean, that you really feel what the people are feeling on the movie screen and it brings up a lot of emotion, that may be an indicator. But, you know, the thing about all this anyway is with this modern dating world, whether you're an empath or not, you de definitely need energy managing strategies to keep it in a place where it's supporting you. So, you know, I wouldn't get hung up on am I or am, am I not if you're here listening to this and you find that dating is frustrating in general, then keep listening because these, you know, things that we're going to be talking about are going to be really helpful for you too. All right, well, then what are some of those management strategies we're discussing? Yeah, I would say, you know, I would say, you know, I, there's a zillion things, but some of my top ones are, you know, the first thing is that if it's something, if a relationship is something you really want, really asking the honest question, how committed am I to making this a reality for me? Because oftentimes we can say, oh, I want this and I really want, oh, it'll happen someday or I'll just let it happen. But there's really not that sense of commitment and really kind of owning it. I think of it like putting it from the back burner to the front burner, like front burner stuff. And it doesn't mean that you have to quit your job or give up all your dream other dreams. This can happen at the same time as everything else. But one, the top one, and you can tell me if you agree with that or not. I mean, I feel Absolutely. like and making it a priority is a huge thing. The next thing is really the knowing who you are. And this may seem really obvious too, but you know, oftentimes what I see with people saying, okay, well, I have my man list or I know what I think, you know, I have the, what I want or I've made a vision board. But really getting to the bottom of that, even doing a quality check on that to know, okay, are you, you know, what are your values and are you living them? Like really getting real with you and your values and knowing what you want is going to really help align you with your right person. But it's so important because so many times I hear people saying, oh yeah, this is what I want. I know what I want. And then they're not really living their own values. And so this is the time to be like, okay, well, how am I living what I ultimately want in a beloved relationship and, and step up to that? Because it's probably going to be a more fulfilled experience for you. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's true because sometimes we want this and sometimes those things have been motivated by what we see in the outside world and we think that's what we want. But if it's not congruent to who we are, like if you were saying like an empath, if I'm an empath, then 
I may want a high power assertive confident man, which is great to ask for, but if the power and the energy is just too intense, that would just kind of affect our energy or even be more draining. Because being empath, I mean, would you agree it can be the superpower or a super stressor? What's your take on that? Well, I would, I mean, I like to think that, you know, who we are is always a superpower. And, but if we don't know what we're dealing with or we're, not understanding or we're working against it, yeah. then that's going to be hard. So, you know, if you are an empath, some of the things that I teach around that are to really understand our patterns, our beliefs, and, and getting to a place where we can navigate the dating world in the most efficient way so that we're so, we are clear about what it is we want. We're not wasting time on people who don't match. And we have the sort of safety and confidence within ourselves, that safety and security within ourselves to be able to speak what we want without feeling like, oh, I'm not enough or, oh, this is going to scare him away or all the sort of insecurities that can come up to get to that place, which takes some personal development to do that. And then, um, you know, learning communication skills and how to set boundaries and all of these things are going to support the path. Because really, you, really, we want to have fun. Will you agree that then again, it all goes back to self-love. If we learn to love ourselves and really accept ourselves just as we are, we are trying to be someone we want to be and just really learn to love ourselves just as we are and be congruent, then once we tap into who, who and what we want, then we'll be able to know what to ask for even more so and what, and then be able to establish boundaries. It all starts with self-love. Would you agree with that? Yes, I totally agree with that. And it's really understanding all the things that keep us from that. So it's mm. really setting the layers that keep us from being able to stand in that because it's so easy and anyone on this tell us someone is probably like, oh, well, yeah, I know that. And, you know, I think we mostly understand that self-love is the place to start, but that how do you do that? You know, how do we do that? <laughs> how do we do that? Yeah. Well, you know, one of the practices that I use is called regenerating images and memory. And it's a process that works with our emotional operating system that helps us to get underneath, get to the core of the belief that we created that says I'm not enough or I'm too much or no one loves me or I'm not worthy. I mean, most people, you know, have dipped their toe in one or two of those <laughs> in their life just because those kinds of beliefs are created so early in life. But, you know, as we um, bring more awareness to them and work with them, so the process that I do works with the imagination and the subconscious. So that it allows- Can you expand on that process, please? I would love to find out. I'm sure all yeah. of you would like to find out more. It's really cool because, you know, all of these beliefs are kind of hanging out in our subconscious, unconscious. Some of them we are conscious of, we just don't know what the source is of them. So in this process, you know, in facilitation, and sometimes I'll do group practices of this, but mostly I do one-on-one -on -one with my love coaching clients, is that we let the body, because the all of this old stuff is in our body, the body kind of guides us using the imagination as a translator. Mm -hmm. So it's, so our imagination starts noticing things and bringing them to form. And then, you know, oftentimes there may be even old memories or old experiences or traumas that come up that then can be, because they're coming up, they can, they can come out and be transformed. And once you do that, which is a pretty simple process, although it can be emotional, mm -hmm. um, once we, we start developing that, once we do that, then we have space to create a new reality. And this is everything because most of the time we're taught, I mean, it's, 
we're taught to be afraid of some of our emotions and then they get stuffed in and hidden and that's the kind of stuff that we're holding on to that then squirts out like different neuroses and and it comes out kind of ugly especially when we're presented with another human that we really care about when we're in these vulnerable situations or we don't even get in those situations because this is yes so you know it's not to say oh you're wrong you're broken but it's really being able to let our emotional operating system do what it actually wants to do, which is to heal the stuff. But most people are just walking around with it and wondering why they always feel disappointed in relationships or they always attract this kind of thing. Yeah. But that's because that's our magnet. You know, our body's just going to keep recreating it until we can get to the bottom of it. So that's what I love about this process is it works super fast. And um, people begin to even look different, you know, after doing this work. So that's sort of my superpower secret weapon. <laughs> I love that. I've been trained in. And, you know, there's other ones too. Like I teach Kundalini Yoga. That's another practice that gets sort of underneath these things. And you don't even have to know what it is, but you, you want to get it out. Because if you don't like what you're seeing in your love life or in the relationships or the people you're attracting, then there is work to be done. And hey, we're human. There's, you know, it's we're constantly evolving. I know for me, I invest a lot of money in my personal development because I love that. You know, I love the freedom that I've had in creating the best relationship that I have now and having amazing work and being able to live in a beautiful place and being able to, you know, have the emotional freedom that comes with doing that kind of stuff. And, and it feels very prosperous in my I world. I love that. I love that. And it's true. And I don't consider spending money. I consider investing in ourselves. And that yeah. is the biggest, that's the most crucial emotionally loving thing you could do for yourself is invest in yourself because that would transform your life in every area. So it's the yeah. best investment. People think, oh, a house is a great investment. No, investing in yourself, that is the biggest investment. It just catapults every area of your life. I love that. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And yeah, and it's true how people change. You can visibly see people changing when they release all that baggage. It's yeah. amazing. You can feel the energy. You can see them. Even through the, the screen, the computer screen, you can still see the, you can almost feel the vibration, but you go see it. It's amazing. It's like, it's almost like years off them, way off them, everything. It's amazing. It's like melts off. Isn't it amazing how it happens? Yeah. Because we have all that energy, I believe, trapped in our bodies, the energetic, and then we have the cognitive. So between the two of them, it's like, holy Moses, let me just take out all those layers and it just changes everything. I love that. Awesome. So true. I love it too. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Like, so for us single women out there, and we would like to attract that amazing relationship, whether we're empaths, whether we're just sympathetic or just loving, nurturing women or whatever we come from our path, how, what are some of the dating rules you have for that to protect ourselves energetically and be playful? Because I can see how, I mean, just one look at you and we can tell you're playful and joyful yeah, and yeah. grateful, which is, that's what I, I believe in, being joyful, playful, and grateful. So how do you do yeah, that dating? Yeah. I love that combo. Um, well, here's the thing. Like, I actually, I like talking about dating rules because I don't believe in them. And um, yes. the reason why I don't believe in them is because, you know, there are people out there who can benefit from dating rules. But I would say that if you're here and you are really serious about having that soulful, deep, connected relationship, then if you are relying on rules, then you're basically cutting yourself out of the picture is what I think. I love that. I am so glad you brought that up. I love it. Yeah, so because when you um, are really deeply in connection with that beloved relationship with yourself, which is the self-love piece, but it's really you know, it's deep. It's, it shows up in everything you do, how you show up for yourself, how you listen to yourself, how you, you know, really acknowledge yourself, 
how you respond to your needs and all of that becomes that kind of relationship. So when you have that dialed in, then really there's, there's no rules that you can apply to that because you plus another person has its own dynamic experience. And you, if you aren't able to be present with yourself and have that relationship with yourself, then you're not going to be able to really even read that experience. You're going to be thinking, okay, well, there has to be something else. There has to be something I don't know, or I need to know, or, you know, someone needs to tell me how to do this. And although I am a love coach and help people with dating, the thing that I want to cultivate the most is you being you and you being the everything that is you and continuing to be more and more of you because your person is looking for you, not a dumbed down version of you, not you hidden in rules, not you, you know, hiding behind, oh, I'm supposed to wear this kind of outfit to look sexy, you. You know, no, this is, you know, you and all of you. So that's what has to happen. I mean, that's what has to happen is you need to bring, be able to bring yourself to a date, yourself to the world in order for your person to even find you. I love that. It's true because you know what? Um, rules are made, made to be broken, but I believe trash rules because if anything, when I believe when we're coaching, we're mostly guiding women and helping them to find themselves because once they tap into their self-love, then there'll be their own guidepost. They'll be able to do what's right for them based on every relationship's different. So to set rules, well, I should text X amount or he should initiate yeah. this and that. Who should call first? Who should, how many days you have to wait? How many hours? Blow that out of the water and just go by intuition, go by your guidance. And once you learn to love yourself, you'll be able to tap into that. You don't need to read online how many dates or whatever it is, wherever you get your source of information. You know, I think we're here to, help them tap into that self-love so they could tap into their intuition. So they're not reliant on us. They're reliant on their own inner love and wisdom. Would you agree or? Yeah, absolutely. So important. So how else can you expand on dating and how we go out in the world and really attract an amazing, loving, juicy relationship like you did? Well, I mean, for me, you know, there was, definitely a combination of things like obviously doing quite a bit of inner work, really prioritizing my love life, prioritizing my love story, being willing to even share that with people, being even willing to say, you know, this is something. <laughs> Bless you. Be vulnerable. <laughs> um, yeah. To be willing to put myself out there in a different way and to be honest with myself and, and cultivating the ability to communicate in a whole new way so that I could be clear and direct and, and not be obsessed with my fears of rejection or, or whatever the fear was of that time, but moving beyond all that. And, um, and certainly I did get support. So, I mean, obviously that's what you and I do. So I value that. That was definitely something that when I had someone who, it was really a spiritual teacher that I had, I didn't even know about love coaches at that time. But when I had someone who had my back and really could reflect on how I was being and you know, could actually call me out on some stuff because there were times when the emotions got heavy and I would be like, oh, really excited about something. And then she was yeah. really helpful in kind of looking at it from an honest perspective and looking at it through what I, my values were. And there were a couple of times when she was like, well, is that really what you want? And, and that question was helpful because it wasn't. You know, I was just getting swooped away by the emotions, which is so easy yeah. for us as women to do that. And it's not good, bad, right, or wrong. But for me, 
I did know that I wanted, I wanted a real like unicorn love, which is, you know, the label I give it when it's the kind of love that is beyond anything else you've ever experienced is beyond what you thought could be possible, but it is. And so, yeah, that was really helpful to have that guidance. And then I'll tell you, you know, in a relationship, it's the next level. I mean, in my love muffin program, we, we go through all the phases, the relationship readiness phase, the dating phase, and the, hey, I found someone I really like, and I don't want to screw this up phase, which is really important <laughs> in of a relationship to be able to develop that foundation of communication and trust and all of that, that becomes the really moving for the driving force going into the future. You know, those early stages are important. So, you know, I find in my own relationship that we're still, after eight years, continuously growing and evolving and learning more and more about how to be supportive to each other and not get into bad habits. So, you know, it's a con constant evolution. I love that. It's beautiful. So for our guest, what would you give as a doable, actionable tips that they can do in the next 24 hours to shift the energy to attract that amazing loving relationship or to go have a deeper relationship within themselves? Hmm. Hmm. So there are a lot of things, but let's see what's coming to mind right now. I think, um, I think one of the most special things that you can start doing right away is to start connecting to your beloved, to from the point of view that is true, which is your person is out there right now. If you have that stirring in your heart, know your person is out there and just connect with that person now. Like mm -hmm. if you have a meditation practice, spend even one minute at the end, just holding hands with your beloved. You don't need to know anything about that person, but just, feel that energetic connection and sit with it on a daily basis. This is a little different than making a vision board or making the man list or any of that. It's really just being in that energy. And the thing that it does as you feel the support going back and forth between you, and I would, you know, sense it, sense that support coming back and forth, kind of like a figure eight. I like to think of it like an infinity symbol. Yes, I love that. Be holding hands. This is the gesture I do. I just hold hands and just go sense it. And as you sense it, you know, you're actually developing, you know, a real love within you too, because that being that beloved is you. So you're basically holding hands with your I love that. I love that. I call that the love call. You're calling in your beloved. So you just yeah. basically, by basing, because it, it's true. In a cognitive way, yes. I believe like everything. Cognitive way, you make the list. But what you're saying is even more special because it's actually feeling the emotion. So you have your list and that's great. But now you have to feel into it and call on the love energy. And once you build that energy, that's what attracts. That's the magnet. That's the key. I love that. Love yeah. it. It's really healing. Absolutely. It's beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I know Macy, you're a super, super generous uh, woman and you have given us a gift so generously. Can you expand on what the gift is, please? Sure. Um, well, I'm pretty sure I offered the breakthrough to love blueprint. Yes. Sound familiar? Okay, good. Um, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> yes. um, so the Breakthrough to Love Blueprint, it's just really a fun process that gets you um, creating more of your vision. And it's, it's a little, it's different than the man list, but it does get you thinking. And it's a little graphic that I created that will help you to begin to set, get the energy in motion. And it's something that, you know, you can follow my graphic or you can make your own, but you have a list of questions to answer that are really important. And yeah, that's really the most important 
like thing that you can do in the beginning is just to sit down and really get honest with yourself about who you are and what it is that is the right relationship for you. Awesome. And I love how playful you are. If we were going to say at least one little playful thing you like to take your class through or your clients through, what would that be? A playful thing that I take? Yeah, you, you, you are famous for like, like love muffins or doing something that's lighthearted and playful rather than just, what would that be? Something you do. Um, well, honestly, holding hands with your beloved is a really playful thing, but I would say, listen to yourself, like sense what it is. What would I love right now? And just ask yourself, like, what, you know, what, how would play be expressed in this moment for me? And just keep asking those questions because the more that you can play and, and let yourself just shine, then yes. the more attractive you're going to be. And you know, let go of the heaviness. When you think of, oh, really, I'm not pretty enough or I'm not good enough, you know, that stuff is going to feel heavy. And if that's the kind of thing that you're noticing all the time, then I do recommend, you know, reaching out for getting a RIM session, which is the regenerating image and memory, or getting some coaching from anyone, like get help. I mean, really, like you don't need to waste your life not having fun. You're supposed to be here in, in having fun and you're supposed to be in love. So if you're here, then there's a love story in your heart and that is not selfish. I mean, I would say the bigger than anything, if you won't do it for yourself, do it for your beloved. There is another person in this game and it's not just about you. And if you don't want to invest in you, would you be willing to invest in someone else's love story that becomes your love story. I love that. That is phenomenal. Wow. Okay. So for viewers that would love to learn more about you and find you so they can be more playful and do a rim session or whatever they want with you, the love muffin, how can they find you? You can go to bighappylove.com. And there's all sorts of ways you can work with me. I do intuitive readings and coaching and, and this rim practice and Kundalini yoga and so many things that just make our life better. Love it. Thank you so much. Macy, thank you so much for participating with us and sharing all your pearls of wisdom. Love you. Love your energy. You're beautiful. I love it. I love you. Bye ladies. Bye Macy. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.